Hey guys, this is Elise. I'm a therapist and wellness coach. Welcome back to COVID-19 Mental Health Chats. Today's topic is being so single during coronavirus self-quarantining and using the time for self-development. This video is designed for those who are single, unmarried, and wanting to be in a serious long-term relationship that may or does lead to marriage, with the intention being that marriage is lifelong and committed to one another's good. I understand that there are many models of marriage and relationships in unique manners, and this video is stretched to the most generic model for accessibility. It is also prepared as a, um, as a generic starting point structure so that you can adapt it for where you are and then use it in a way that benefits you. It's also prepared with a series of question prompts that are intended for you to journal and reflect about deeply. It's not the end of the conversation, and these questions are really just the beginning of the conversation. A friend of mine sent me a really great image of the opportunity that is present in this time. As a single person, you can use this time of self-quarantining as a caterpillar hibernates in its cocoon before emerging as a butterfly. I think that's a great image and so useful for the intentions of this video and how we can make use of this time that we are finding in spending so much um, time with ourselves. This video is designed, again, to help you get started on some areas that you can reflect on, journal on, align your life as a single unmarried person so that once you are free to go out and about, bump into new people and date new people again, you'll have come out as a fuller version of yourself, more ready for that next stage of your life. So um, yeah, go ahead and grab a paper and a pen to jot down the questions that resonate with you and um, the thinking and talking points that you can reflect on. The umbrella perspective that we're going to take on for this particular initial conversation is to take on the lens of um, a big picture of life. Whoever you're going to marry is hopefully your partner for life, which means that we wanna think about each major area of functioning with intention and mindfulness and purpose. The major areas of functioning and doing life are at least inclusive of the following nine categories, but it's not restricted to it. Uh, for the purposes of this video, I limited, to, limited it just to nine. So the first category is your worldview. This may involve religion, or it may involve spirituality, or it may involve both. Spirituality can also include humanism. Your core values flow from your worldview when they are integrated and cohesive. The second category is finances. The third is education. The fourth is parenting philosophies. The fifth is social life as far as family life, friend life, neighborly life. The sixth is work or career. Seventh is intimacy and personal communication. Eighth is personality and habits. Ninth is hopes and dreams. And all of the um, thoughts that I'm going to share about these nine spheres of functioning in your life are going to be designed towards the conversation of um, what we may be looking for in, uh, in a long-term committed lifelong relationship. My first task for you is to answer this simple question. What are you willing to suffer? Many of us are familiar with some variation of these phrases for good or for worse, for times of good health and poor health, for riches or for lack, to commit to one another at the marriage altar. The vow itself includes both extremes in the commitment and everything in between. But when it comes to dating, most people get to the point of asking, what do I enjoy? What do you enjoy? Because let's enjoy it together. And few ask the question, what am I willing to suffer? What are you willing to suffer? What can we suffer together? And that is possibly one of the most key questions that you can ask yourself. I'll break down the questions that immediately flow from that first question, what are you willing to suffer, for each of the nine spheres of functioning that I mentioned before. This is a very key question, not only for marriage, and assessing potential relationship outcomes, but also is a key question to ask 
for all of your other spheres of functioning that I mentioned before. And is great for um, d discerning your career, your vocation, and whether you get involved in certain major, major decisions and changes in your life. As a therapist, I've worked with couples for premarital counseling, married couples who are having newlywed crises because of what they're discovering upon getting married, still others who are long-term married couples but maybe struggling with chronic infidelity, others who suffer major personality changes that shifted their ability to connect, and still others who grieve the loss of their spouse, just to name a few, um, but certainly not uh, exhaustive of the entire spectrum of things that can come up in marriage and relationship therapy. The question of what are you willing to suffer is poignant and relevant when marriage is no longer just an idea in the clouds, but something that is pursued and committed in reality. We are people who are three-dimensional, walking in the dirt, and sometimes that dirt turns to mud. So to best be prepared, the metaphor I'll use is, we have to think about the rainy days when we might get stuck inside. Okay, so let's break down the question of what are you willing to suffer for into each of those nine spheres of functioning. As far as your worldview, the questions are just, you know, these are starting point questions. They include the following. What are you willing to live for? And more importantly, what are you willing to die for? That helps to quickly prioritize what your core values are. And that gives you a clue to what your worldview might be. What are you willing to go to prison for even on unjust grounds? What are you willing to be physically tortured for? And what will you stand by even if all your friends and family were to betray you for this? What core values are non-negotiables that you would go to bat for, for yourself, for your family, for anyone on the planet? The second sphere is finances. What are you willing to work hard for? And what are you willing to sacrifice for? What do you need to save? What do you need to achieve? What do you need to invest to reach the dreams and goals that you hope to share with your spouse? What time are you willing to lose to ensure a security level of X in terms of finances? What kinds of stretches do you expect your spouse to make to suffer to ensure that level of X? In the section of your education or your partner's education or that of your potential future children or that of the next generation if you want to create scholarships and fund schools, these are some questions to start with. What are you willing to take a stand for, put your money towards, or your own teaching labors towards, or your energy to be involved with education? The next section has to do with parenting philosophies. What are the kinds of parenting fights that you want to have, both with your spouse and against your spouse? So again, we're going to those core values. What are the kinds of things you are willing to stay up at night about as a potential parent or potential co-parent. The next session section is um, social life. So for this one, we wanna think about what kind of home culture, neighborhood culture, do you want to help cultivate, which requires commitment and vision in word and deed done on a regular and consistent basis. The next section is intimacy and personal communication. Questions for this section, there's a few of them, to start with are having some really vulnerable looks at ourselves. And really, we're digging into getting to know ourselves pretty well on this, um, in this sphere. What are your weaknesses that you need someone to be patient with? How often do you need physical intimacy? In what ways do you need emotional and mental intimacy? And we're thinking about intimacy in a broad spectrum. All the grays are included, not just the extremes of black and white. What are the traits of someone that would motivate you to put aside your pride so that you can get out of your comfort zone to meet their needs for intimacy and building trust? The next fear is about personality and habits. And we're still getting very vulnerable and getting to know ourselves in this section. Some questions to start off with may include, what are the weaknesses that you are willing to help cultivate towards growth in both yourself and your partner? 
What are the areas that you know in your heart of hearts that you need to be humble about when someone who knows you better than anyone else as your spouse and they take you to task about it? What are the areas you need already developed in your partner by the time they meet you? What are the areas that you can grow with your partner in, whether it is the same or complementary or totally different? What imperfections of your partner's past would you accept without judgment that you would not use as a weapon against them, even in your weakest and darkest moments when you disappoint yourself? What kind of complaints can you handle listening to for the rest of your life? What kind of com complaints do you give that someone would have to listen to for the rest of their life? In thinking about these questions, um, it gives us a really sobering perspective of our humanity. And whatever your answers are to all of these questions, honestly, they're all okay. Um, there is no right answer to any of these questions. And it just allows you to know a little bit more about yourself and the, the you, the fullness of you that you are wanting to share in fullness with someone else. And by getting to know yourself a little, you also can see what kind of person you can most likely fully embrace for all of who they are as well. And that's a beautiful thing. So, okay, let's go to the last sphere. The last sphere is hopes and dreams. And the questions that are involved here as a preliminary step involve what do you hope for? What are your dreams? What kind of dreams can you support in someone else even though they are not your dreams and hopes? And if life ever got so difficult or if we ever came to another pandemic like now where we have to focus on survival and not the upper echelons of hopes and dreams, what key traits and core values must be present in your spouse for you to know that you married the right person, even if your hopes and dreams never could come true? One way to start picturing this is, imagine in your mind's eye that you go to bed at the end of the day Imagine it to be a bed in a nice house. Imagine it to be a bed in a roach-infested apartment. Imagine it to be a makeshift bed under the bridge. And when you go to rest on each of those beds, you look over at your spouse and you know that you made the right choice, no matter how dark or bleak your environment seems at the time. So in that scenario, again, the question is, what key traits and core values must be present in your spouse for you to know that you married the right person, even if your hopes and dreams never could come true. So with these questions, and I know they're really, really challenging questions, what first begins to happen is you yourself start to three-dimensionalize in your own mind's eye. You become real to yourself. Then by extension of that, the, out, the outline, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say out, outcome. The outline of your future spouse begins to three-dimensionalize. You are such a special and unique person that for all the traits of who you are, there is very, very likely a very special and unique person whose combination of traits are best suited for you. Honestly, I don't think any of us will truly know in a tangible or measurable way until we're on the other side of life whether there is such a thing as a singular soulmate or multiple soulmates. But for the information we have available to us today and how humans have developed and come so far, we can use the reason and intellect and abilities that we have to help us identify the kind of person we need ourselves to become to boldly walk into a commitment as life-changing as marriage. And secondly, to help us identify the kind of person we can suffer with and who can suffer us to boldly walk into a commitment of marriage with us. My hope is 
that these questions start a really romantic journey of self-discovery and self-knowledge that can deepen and help bring clarity to your dating journey. Please subscribe, like, comment, let me know what your thoughts are and what you'd like to hear more of. I'll continue to share content to help you self-care and make the best use of your time during these self-quarantining COVID days. And uh, I'll see you next time. Thanks, guys.